Hey guys, it's Matt. Just one minute before starting the last chapter of the book. What a long, strange trip it's been. That's the only thing I'll ever steal from the Grateful Dead, but it's very apt and appropriate here. What a long, strange trip. Now, the half page is not a half page. To the old guard, they would understand exactly every bit. It could just be a few sentences, but there's all types of people here. I had to be thorough. This is it, guys. This is the amalgamation of what everybody shared with me. 15 years of close inspection on this reality. It is longer. I'm still going to call it the half page. I wanted to make sure everybody could understand. What follows has been put together through my own understanding and observations and by corresponding with hundreds of people who have experienced aspects of reality that I have not. Some of you have been out of body. Some of you have traveled astrally. Some here can see or sense auras. Tony, who I've referenced many times over the years, has in some way communed with his higher self. I stress that the following is not from me alone. It's the amalgamation of all that I've learned, all that we've looked at together and you've shared with me over about 15 years that has helped me connect a few dots. My skill is putting it all together in a way that's easy to understand. I don't think everyone here in this place is the same spiritual entity. My path may not be your path. Jesus or another God of religion may be your way out. It is not my way out. In my opinion, one size here does not fit all. That's what most religions do, though. Most offer one size of pants. It says, here, you must put these on. You must squeeze into them. One need only take a close look at who is supposedly, quote, in power here in this place to see there are various types of entities running around. Except very briefly, I don't mention God or religion in what follows. I appreciate the Christians and those of other religions who have stuck with me for so long. We still have a lot in common in avoiding the tricks of our adversary, tricks that will certainly keep coming, for that is its very role. What you know of as you here on earth is just a small aspect of a greater you, which can only be described as a part that's not here. The notion that consciousness is solely derived from a pile of mashed potatoes that sits inside the human skull is ridiculous. However, it must seem that way. It must seem that consciousness flows from between the temples, from behind the eyes, or nothing works here. This place, first and foremost, must be believed in. The experience must be believed. You or an aspect of you agreed to come here before birth to have an experience. This means that you will continue to exist after death. The notion that the universe was derived from an explosion from space and your existence is a random phenomenon is absurd. This place is not physical the way it appears to be. It's a fluid illusion of sorts, and its very purpose is to play a trick on you. That's okay. You signed up for the trick. Existence is likely many layers of self-awareness. What you know of as you is simply the part of the whole that is able to step off the elevator at this particular floor, called Earth. At night, you exist in a dream, believing while inside the dream, that character is all you are. In the dream consciousness, there's no understanding of a person sleeping in a bed, right? The dream at night is a level of self-awareness. Right now, as you listen to me in the waking world, is another level of self-awareness. It's very likely that death brings the next layer of self-awareness. But why do so many people consider death the final train stop? That's illogical to me. Why would the next step up be a single place for all of eternity? Why wouldn't it simply be the next step up with lots more steps to come after that? Everyone understands how the dream self relates to the conscious self in the waking world. Why wouldn't you now have a similar relationship with the part of you that exists and will exist after death? Just because we can only look back in one direction relating the dream self to the waking self doesn't mean the self-awareness in the other direction doesn't exist. Again, why would death bring the final train stop for all of eternity? It's far more likely there are many layers. The ratio of the increase in clarity from one level to another may remain consistent with each jump. Looking back, the dream world seems blurry to our waking perception. This earth may seem the same to us after death. Heck, yesterday seems blurry to me. The acuity of your eyes now in the waking world may seem vague, blurry, compared to the next level up, 
which would be after death, and so on, moving through additional levels of clarity, and more importantly, additional levels of understanding, personal understanding. The dream character is ignorant of the person in the bed. Don't be the dream character in this life. Relay your experiences in great detail to the next layer of you or the aspect that's not here. If reality is a fractal, no one could possibly know how many levels there are. Why did we incarnate here? Why did we come to Earth? Well, why does anyone go anywhere? To have an experience they can't have in the place from which they came. There are likely many things that happen here that are unique and don't exist where you came from. The roller coaster ride of emotions in the body I sense are unique to this place. Relish every one that comes to you, even those considered bad. Take what this place has to offer and experience all of it as a representative or ambassador for the whole of you, or for what some say, your higher self. To me, this is a place specifically designed to experience certain types of loss and the emotional highs and lows that can only come from inhabiting a body in a material world. Again, appreciate these emotions. They may not exist in the same way after death. There should be equal wonder in the bad days as well as in the good. I sense our higher self wants to experience all of it and doesn't much care if you experience emotional pain in this earthly life. It may need the bad experiences even more than the good. Because there's so much negative in this place, the first grade truth researcher can do nothing other than yell out hijacked and it's not supposed to be this way. Oh, woe is me. Relish the unique experiences here for there are so many. Unfortunately, we become habituated to them as part of the daily grind. So for most of us, there are few that stand out. You can make the most menial aspect of life a wondrous thing. It's entirely up to you. The interpretation of each moment of your life is up to you. Inside your house, you can pick up a broom and smash a spider web and say, ah, fucking spiders, get in here, ah, horse shit. You can do that, or you can sit, sit, pull your chair up and study the spider. So watch it sitting in the middle of its web for 20 minutes and create an experience for yourself about a thousand times better than any program that's ever come on television. I sense that the incredible joy of music is something that can't quite be replicated outside of this place. Thousands of experiences here should be seen as unique, but almost all are overlooked by most people because they have no comparison point from the place in which they came. And again, it all becomes part of the drudgery of life, the way that they see it. There are many physical pleasures in the material world, of course, and they must be balanced here with pain in this duality funhouse. Perhaps the greatest experience to be derived here is the ability for the very first time to experience mortality, to get a sense of what the final end of existence feels like. Death or the end of existence, is likely a foreign concept from where we came. Only this place can truly express what the end of being feels like. In the spiritual realm, there's likely no classes on death or book learning that can accurately paint a picture about the end of one's existence. It must be experienced here on earth, and even feared, at least for a little while. Such an understanding is impossible without the experience itself as useless as buying a book promising three easy steps to falling in love. The ancient holiday of Saturnalia, in addition to mummering, offered a temporary role reversal between the peasants and their lords. This life is likely our role reversal. Death could simply mean the end of the role reversal. Remember, even the painful emotions here may be coveted or even needed by higher self or the aspect of you that's not here. During Saturnalia, which is likely the modern translation of the 12 days of Christmas, the peasants loved, of course, pretending to be lords and ordering everybody around. Guess what? It's said that the dukes and earls started to enjoy their role play as well as peasants. Here in this place, a lower entity like Bill Melvin is on top. Here he is on top. There's likely good reason these creeps love Saturnalia, for this place has allowed them to crawl out from under the rock, at least for a little while. This earth is your Saturnalia too. You are likely a spiritual lord playing the role of a peasant. In this place, you, the higher being, believe every bit of what this life says you are. 
The masses act out Saturnalia each day, believing their temporary role is permanent. The trick of this place is highly successful on most people, of course. And after that, I'm going to need to do a sidebar. I just, boom, close the book. Uh, I can hear it now. I think the last time we did this, it was Larry Silverfish speaking to me. Oh, how convenient, Matt, and your people of your ilk, that, oh, you just have convinced yourself, how wonderful, you've convinced yourself that this is temporary for you and your spiritual lords and your greater beings. Look, Larry Silverfish, b- believe what you want. First off, everybody's inner knowing. All the old guard, the inner tuning forks, all say this this low experience here is to be embraced, but it is temporary. It is not who we truly are. I don't have to convince anyone of anything. I'm not saying anything in a desperate attempt to make anybody feel better. Your inner knowing screams, you are the greater being than Melvin and Larry Silverfish. That this role reversal thing I talked about, Saturnalia, did your inner knowing kind of just say, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, don't, I, I could sit here and, and dedicate the next 20 years of this channel trying to prove it. But guess what? Through the 15 years of what we've already looked at, we've already proven it. The screen and its minions are without a doubt the lower, more pathetic entity. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about it. Nobody's saying this sort of thing in a desperate attempt to make ourselves feel better because we really covet and envy the Larry Silverfishes of the world. Sorry. Do you consider waking up in the morning to be the death of your dream self? Think about it. Do you consider waking up in the morning to be the death of your dream self? No, you just don't care. But you just put your dream self to death. Bot, I'm talking about ourselves in a dream. This waking world to the next via what they call death is likely no different. Do you cry for days when you wake up in your bed realizing you have sentenced your dream self to death by way of your alarm clock? Do you call into work asking how many days can be taken off for bereavement of your dream self? Do you call the police and sit there distraught, telling the officer what happened? Uh, Officer, uh, my dream was going really, really well. It was wonderful. My dream self was riding on a bus, and my alarm clock here in the room went off, and I killed that mofo. Of course, this is ridiculous. You don't mourn the loss of your dream self when your alarm clock goes off. You'll likely look back on this life in the same way you view your dream self now. An interesting experience, even fascinating, but no big deal once it's all put into the proper perspective. Once you see it's a small part of a gigantic whole. Is the loss of your dream self a big deal to you now and every morning? Of course not. People like telling others, though, about the dreams they had last night, don't they? Think about it. Why do they enjoy that so, telling others about their dreams? And nobody likes hearing about it. People love telling it, though. Will you do the same thing in the next life, talking about Earth? And will people roll their eyes? Oh, he's going to talk about Earth again, the way nobody wants to hear somebody tell you about their dream last night. In order for this Earth experience to work and succeed in what it was designed for, this reality must be fully believed in. Death must loom over us our entire lives, always whispering to us that it may bring the final end to existence. Yes, for the life experience to work, that concept must seem real and even be feared, at least for a while. It is necessary to come in here, Tommy, the deaf, dumb, and blind kid. We can know nothing about our true selves, or nothing here works. It's idiotic to declare this place is some sort of prison planet. It must be, simply because we have no recollection of our past. Once again, The Wizard of Oz shows itself to be the biggest truth drop movie of all time. Dorothy had to fully immerse herself and believe in the experience of Oz for her to gain a new appreciation and perspective upon finding herself back in her bed in Kansas. She went from hating life and trying to run away to being very appreciative simply because of the experience in between in her fake world, like this fake world. This experience may do the same for the aspect of you that's not here. That Tony says, don't think of it as separate. It is you. You are it. Perhaps the greatest answer to what is the meaning of life is for one to simply realize that life has meaning. What's the meaning of life? To realize that life has meaning. And it's for you to find out what it is. The rule of opposites when it comes to the dark reality's presentation is never broken. If science tells you that you're an anomaly from the Big Bang and an explosion in space, then you know you're the opposite of that. 
If Darwin says the chances of you sitting here is like one in trillions based on your monkey man lineage and what marmot wasn't killed by a dinosaur, then you know the chances of you sitting where you are right now is one to one or 100%. The astronomical probabilities given to you by science means your life was meant to be. It's the rule of opposites. You're here for a reason. You need to find out what it is. The asshole here doesn't want you to find that out. It will block you and distract you at every turn so you don't find that out. To win in any game, one needs an opposing team to compete against, and the opposition must be competent, or nothing is learned. The Wicked Witch of the West, WWW by the way, was competent. Very fearful character. This reality needs a bad guy, and there are many here playing that role on behalf of what I call the asshole dark or the outer ring of reality, or the screen, or sometimes called the knot milk. This opposition, playing the role that was designed for it, is here to block your spiritually broke ass and convince you that you're Humpty Dumpty, needing the king's horses and needing the king's men for help. If there's a spiritual triumph to be had, there has to be a force on the other side of the chessboard whose job it is to impede your progress and competently. Its goal is simple, to get in our way to hide our reason for coming here, which is mostly done by hiding your true nature and hiding who we truly are. It's a master at that. If you can overcome it, then you have won. It is not overcome by fighting back. It is overcome by worrying about yourself and doing what the whole of you needs to do here and getting out of life what was intended. It is trying to block us at every turn. Its distraction and tactics in this regard are endless. I assure you, the whole of you does not need more Tartaria research. So in this place, a real spiritual being has an opponent. You would not be listening to this if you weren't a real spiritual being. There are all different types here in this Star Wars bar, in this Earth Star Wars bar. You are likely the highest uh, spiritual incarnation, or you wouldn't be listening to this. You'd be off, uh, let's say, doing something else or calling me conspiracy theorist. But the creepy thing on the other side from us is nothing to fear. The reality was not hijacked. It's truly an asshole, our opponent. But to me, this thing is a role player, baked into reality's original design. As Bane said in Batman, it is necessarily evil. It's necessary here in this place. For Luke to win in Star Wars, an empire needs to be overcome and a Death Star destroyed. A movie, though, needs an exciting ending. Now, this isn't a movie. It's close. But it's not a movie the way I'm presenting it. We're not here to coordinate an X-Wing mission against it, flying Donald Trump flags off the back of our hyperdrives. An all-out assault is what it wants from us. That's its trick. Oh, come get me. No, no, don't worry about yourself. Come get me. That's one of the big parts of its trick. Point at the bad guy in the police lineup. Star Wars wouldn't be quite the same with Luke just chopping wood on his own and carrying water on Tatooine for two hours. People would be looking around saying, well, what's this? When's the movie going to start? All he's doing is worrying about himself. That doesn't make for good entertainment. In that movie, though, the only mention of the Empire is a radio ad linked to a speeder recall for airbags. Those who are the creepy minions are almost certainly not the same spiritual entity that you are. Tony described them as sequential incarnations that have a different relationship with their higher self than you do. They're not spiritually advanced as you are and are playing it safe, not willing to take the spiritual leap that you did. They are, as he said, game addicted. In a way, they're like the entities in the movie Poltergeist, hovering around Carol Ann, unwilling to move on. The adversary of real spirits here, which I call the knot milk, others called by other names, has been a worthy opponent for centuries. I'm not going to send it flowers, but I appreciate it's competent. This adversary is not something that can be picked out of a police lineup. There's no final boss level to overcome or go beat. The knot milk is more of a frequency and a choice linked to reality itself and which side people willingly choose to serve while they're alive. Our adversary's role is quite simple, to craft a trick that blocks real spirits from doing what they're supposed to do with their life if they choose the good side of the force. It has successfully created a Western world that has become an instruction manual on how to give our Jedi power away. It has been extremely competent. 
The modern world has become the ship of fools, and a few real spirits, a tiny minority of us, it seems, are now taking to the lifeboats like you are. Here's the easiest question in the world. What do your friends and family who are on the ship of fools do? Do most people around us serve the trick of this reality with their hands out, begging for its rewards and begging for more? Or do they serve the needs of their spiritual whole and why they're here on earth? Do they follow a private personal path? Or are they in a race to keep up with the Joneses battling for social media comments? Answer is pretty simple. We're a tiny minority who have become incompatible with this reality. Therefore, from the perspective of your friends and family, we are as strange as they say we are. They would be right. Reality's metrics and standards of what is considered normal are in their favor. We are linked to a reality that's long gone. Overcoming the knot milk can be done if two general things happen. Number one, the general trick is noticed and one detaches from it. Almost all of us are there, or you wouldn't be listening to this. Oh, we see right through the trick. That is not a problem for us anymore. But there's additional things that can be done. Understanding how it tries to work through the straw man and the legal fiction is just one example among thousands, but most of us are well-versed here. That's number one. Basically, it's a trick. What part? All of it. Number two, the breadcrumbs and enticements are then left behind and one focuses on the worry about yourself activities and the real reason we're here, what the spiritual whole needs. That is simply getting in touch with why you incarnated here. That does not mean waiting for some grand calling from above that moves you like I need to establish 80 homeless shelters throughout New England, some gigantic, grandiose message from God. Or it's, I don't think it's going to happen that way. Okay? The work, the worry about yourself activities, part two, It's everything we do every little moment of the day. It can be as simple as walking by a piece of trash, taking a few steps, thinking about the trash, and going, oh, I need to to go back and get it. Walking back, picking it up, putting it in your pocket, and throwing it out two blocks later, and then noticing that you are not the same person you were 20 years ago, that you're evolving in some way. I would have never done this. My old self would look at my new self as alien, as foreign. Little tiny wins, not some grand calling. Waiting for that is part of the not milk trick. This idea does very much relate to, you know, the Buddhist or Zen phrase, a before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. It's the same thing, it's just a completely different perspective on what you're doing. It doesn't say after enlightenment, 60-inch television and Blu-ray, does it? Look around the world today. Unfortunately, most people in this world have fallen for every bit of the deception that the knot milk churns out. They sit in their bathtub, believing what is under the bubbles is all they are, and to many, all they will ever be. They fire their rubber duckies against tile walls in complaint. Amongst the masses, the spiritual aspect is no longer in balance with the physical side. That is the knot milk's main goal. To many, that side of them no longer even exists. It's hard to fathom how so many have become so fooled, especially when the presentation has broken down into a clown show. Our job in the few short decades we have left after we begin to see the trick is to learn what our true self is and then to shed the false self that this life has created. I've called this in the past cutting Jacob Marley chains with affirmation and with understanding. Put more simply, to use this life correctly to benefit our spiritual whole. It is common to call the part not here higher self, but I don't really like that term. I prefer spiritual whole. Humpty Dumpty can only put himself back together if he rejects the help of the king's horses and rejects the help of the king's men. Practice daily what the dream self does not do. Consider throughout your day the part of you that made the decision to incarnate on earth. What does it need? Hey, dream self. Consider the part of you that decided to lay down and go to sleep. It doesn't do that, does it? It's fooled. You don't have to be the same to the next layer up. What do you think the higher level wants from you here on earth? You will feel it. It's not a logical decision in the brain or the frontal lobes. It's a feeling. How many people throughout all of history have ever thought about such a thing? Perhaps higher self wants more mud flood research. That's a good reason for incarnating on earth. Maybe it wants another Madame Blavatsky book read. See how absurd certain pursuits become when put into this light? 
Our opponent, it can be said, is part of reality itself that manifests itself into the physical world in thousands of different ways, and through minions we can only describe as being on the download, or on its frequency. The not Nelk is similar to how Morpheus first described the Matrix to Neo. You can feel it when you turn on your TV, he said, or when you do your taxes. Our community has thousands of variations on the same sentence from the Matrix. You can feel it when you hear Elon Musk talk about his roadster in space. You can see it and feel it when Taylor Swift dances against the glass during the Super Bowl. We have tens of thousands of more examples than even Morpheus. To people like us who are doing the work properly, the presentation of the outer ring has a disturbing feel to it. It doesn't sit right with us. We're on a completely different frequency. Its Pied Piper plays its notes to the masses, and it is dissonance to us. The Notnilk is an expert at working through people who are on its same frequency and radio station. There's an army of assholes out there that I call minions that spend their entire lives doing nothing other than assisting the trick. At this moment in history, almost all of Western society and culture works for it churning out complicated systems like big religion and government to shape society in such a way so the spiritual goals of real people become harder to achieve. And it gains new tools to do this now monthly by way of new AI technology. Almost everything prominent in modern society and culture is designed to aid its trick, which is simply to hide a real spiritual being from understanding and knowing itself. Everything comes back to those few words. The understanding and revelation that a trick is being played here throughout all of society allows a real being like us to to finally do what it's supposed to do in life. If our job is to remember, its job is to simply have us remain forgetful. Its main tactic is to get a real person to believe that this place is of the utmost importance. As our collecting up its rewards and showing off the achievements it says are best in life, It has convinced almost everyone that personal fulfillment can only come through its good graces. Most people on the ship of fools fully comply and chase this social standing, of course. To them, there is no other arm on their Vitruvian man. The spiritual side is given nothing that it needs, and for many, is cut off. So, this reality is a spiritual game of sorts, you versus what I call Notnilk and its minions, who are on a frequency to further propagate the trick. You begin to win when you understand that the version of you that is here on earth is not the whole of you. If that's the case, the consequences of this place, and even the notion of death itself, lose their bite. The not wins by getting people to believe this world is all they are. It fools real people into defining themselves by only the parts spawned from this place, such as body and ego. Its ruse is structured so you continually look to attach to it, make contract with it, and seek its rewards. It fools you into thinking you can only progress in every way, as I said, through its good graces. If you define your life by the screen standards of success, it has won. Saying it won means you have spent life serving its aims and not serving the reason you incarnated here on earth in the first place. It tempts you to look outside yourself for life's biggest answers. It presents a never-ending bog of distraction, magically customized to each player in the game to get your maximum attention. It operates supernaturally in a way that's impossible for a real world to do. For a group about to wake up, it's become a conspiracy generation machine, a closing pitcher in a baseball game that wields distraction like a demonic Excalibur. Physical is the illusion of this place. Mars can never be landed on. The minions know it, and they understand far more about reality than the scientists are allowed to know. This is a fluid reality of sorts. The Mandela effect is very real, and for some reason, what we call changes can now be noticed where in the past they could not be noticed. What I call the creeps have a way of pulling reality buttons and levers, for lack of better words, to keep getting away with the thousands of things that they somehow pull off every year. We'll never fully understand it, other than noticing that reality gets, quote, more fake, more false, and more fluid as one moves out in rings from their heart center, per our reality rings diagram. As you move outward towards the knot milk, towards the screen, more corruption starts to break down, more blurry, more fake. 
The first grade truther points at the secret societies and believes that men and women in smoking rooms are pulling all of this off to perfection. Yes, to us it's a clown show, but I can say to perfection when the masses fully believe in all their ridiculous presentations. Almost every part of the Not Nilk stage show for the masses is backwards. There was no Big Bang that spawned monkey men. Mind and consciousness came first, before matter. Our adversary knows how these things work. It has manipulated all of society and culture to create the reality at once. The false breadcrumbs given to truth researchers have been a big part of helping to create the reality that at once. Yes, we certainly have aided it for many years. Most of our brethren of researchers still believe, though, there's a final answer to explain each conspiracy that they research that will one day be discovered if they just put in enough time and enough effort into their research. They don't understand that, in a way, they are creating the breadcrumbs themselves as reality generator beings. Somehow, the not elk is a reflection of themselves and ourselves. A win can only be achieved, therefore, if one sees that in this place, there is no answer for all of these strange things. The pursuit of it is the trick. Well, how did they do that? How did they build that? How did they build that shit? How did they pull this off? What does this person know? Who's in on it? Why are so many ruins buried? The pursuit of these things is exactly what it wants if you chase it. In this place, there is no answer to these breadcrumbs. Let me repeat that. In this place, there is no answer that will come via putting in more research to these breadcrumbs. Searching for them is falling for the trick as much as anybody that bows down before Ryan Seacrest in his entertainment shows or any other folly that this reality presents. So therefore, truth research, when further investigating the trick and falling for it, is not more just or more righteous as most of the truthers believe. Leaving it behind is more just. And that hopefully and eventually leads to the worry about yourself activities. You're not here to fix society. You're here to fix yourself. The game here to most seems unfair. You and me versus all of society and culture and massive not nilk infrastructures established to be a massive trick and then refined over centuries. It's, it's, it's not fair. That's right. It's not fair. It's all in our favor. Let me repeat that. It's not fair at all. It's all in our favor once you have a certain realization. Why? Because you have the power to win at any time in any moment of realization. This relates directly, of course, to because I said so. The not nilk has no say over whether it wins or loses. You have complete say over whether you win or lose. Imagine a card game where, with a certain realization, you can simply take the cards that you want to build your own hand. You can pick four aces if you want. All it can do is tirelessly prop up its same old trick and distractions, which centers around telling you that you must play the cards that it deals you. I will deal you cards. Oh, thank you, sir. May I have another? It cannot beat you directly. It can only fool you to beat yourself. The rules here dictate it must operate through deception behind a trick. In those who have succumbed to the not milk, died, and lost, it was then successful in hiding that person's own power and understanding about their true nature from them. It's a master at demoralization and learned helplessness. It will convince you that you can do nothing here for yourself without its rewards and without its permission. Modern science is the silver bullet of its ruse. One bookend is Einstein, the other Darwin. Reality lines up with the ruse of science because it was designed to. The scientific experimentation is actually correct, but what they're recording by way of experimentation is the trick itself. They're recording the trick, and they're proud of themselves. <laughs> the scientists are simply recording the false breadcrumbs given to them by reality itself. The truth of this world is impossible to glean through experimentation and through university research labs. And that this, all of this doesn't even take into account that the scientists themselves in the human body only gets 1% of the data via the senses. I mean, what a waste of time. Seeing the nature of this rigged game is only the first part in graduating. Oh, he said graduate. A uh, trigger alert. Uh, he applied school. Uh, you know what? Any experience where anything is learned, you can attach the word school or graduating or things like it. How, how else am I? I mean, this is hard to talk about to begin with. What words am I supposed to use? Klingon? 
Our adversary is not concerned with those who pass part one, just seeing the trick. Back in the day, eight years ago, 10 years ago, we were so proud of ourselves. Oh, we see through the trick. We win. No, no, we were missing the biggest part, part two, the worry about your self-activities, the work doesn't care about people who just can see through the trick. It does not care at all. A lot of the truth community thinks, oh, we're getting it scared. We can see right through it. It's scared. No, it's not. It's laughing all the way to the spiritual bank. Okay, part one is basically for nothing without doing part two, the work. Now, it is expert at getting people stuck in part one and that quicksand. Sure, some people will see the fraud of this world and point to the trick. That's better than most, right? But the knot milk says, so what if they see my trick? If I play these distraction cards correctly, these sons of bitches still won't do what they're supposed to do with their life. These sons of bitches still won't give the spiritual whole of them what it needs. That's what it cares about. So it offers more and more Tartaria, more aliens, More mud flood, more Aleister Crowley and his stupid-ass posed pictures, more crop circles, more pyramids, and new theories about what happened to the damn Titanic. It hands out endless yellow breadcrumbs in its conspiracy generation machine, and most of our brethren take the bait. The dark reality knows there's a small minority here that will question what the masses so easily accept, and it has customized the flavor of those breadcrumbs just for people like us. These croutons are called conspiracy, and that is the ultimate form of quicksand in this place. It knows there are some here who have the capacity to see through it, to drop veils, to wake up more easily than others. So they needed to be offered levels of what, to them, appear to be greater and greater truth. This is the multi-layers of what I've talked about in the past, the graduated animal farm, the different layers of truth that are presented as quicksand in disguise. For people like us, it needs us trapped in the conspiracy bog, keeping our conscious attention close to the outer ring of the screen, far away from your heart-centered reality, because that's the only place you need to be to get something done, chasing its array of topics, Thinking answers can be found by doing more research is, of course, falling for the main trick. It actually makes mistakes on purpose to lure us further into its bog. The second part to winning is far more important than part one seeing through the trick, of course. Actually doing the work. Why did you incarnate here? Getting in touch with that is so difficult because we're up against so many things here in this reality, so many distractions. In this place, mind, body, and spirit have to try to work together. It's not easy. People don't even know what does that even mean, getting spirit to work together. Getting a sense as to what that means takes a long time. We've been brainwashed since birth. It's not easy. Getting in touch with what you're really supposed to do here in the short time we have left. It's not as exactly working overtime to increase the mortality tables, is it? The, the not milks like what's in the water, what's in the food, and we got to basically take the GMO it provides. The, the not milks goal is simple, to make sure you waste time on frivolity, frivolity. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I wrote it. And folly. You know what I mean, though. I'm not re-recording. F it. If it can keep a real person stalled in the caterpillar phase until the day of its death, it wins. It has convinced most people that the spiritual butterfly doesn't even exist So there's nothing to even strive for. Now, what I'm referring to here is not like new age, uh, ascendance, transcendence, nonsense. No, no, no. In this place, we're meant to be low things, smelly things, and we will remain low for our entire lives. It's okay. That's what this place is for. To these granola crunchers who talk about some sort of ascendance, like actual transformation in this life that includes who we are, the physical, I ask, when exactly should I expect to transition into a light being? After I flush the toilet? Or do I, do I transition into a light being before I flush the toilet? No, it's okay. Being low here is part of this unique experience. It's not to be overcome. It's to be embraced in some way. This is not the place to know God, but the place to forget that you were once so close. I can still talk about things like the transition from the spiritual caterpillar to the butterfly because it's not just happening to you in the flesh, it's, to the whole, it's happening to the whole of you. That's why parts of you are in these low physical reality systems. It's not just you flying up into the air like Neo, okay? There's a difference. For those few malcontents like you and me who sense there's something fundamentally wrong with the world and who begin a life of research 
or a life of sticking your head up out of the water to notice certain things, there's a critical juncture for the knot milk between the caterpillar and the spiritual butterfly stage. We're actually having somebody do what they need to do here. One last place it can stop you. The knot milk has become a master at customizing its attack at us and against us at this very phase. As mentioned, this is why the knot milk is the master of conspiracy and the conspiracy maps we've looked at and thousands upon thousands of different things that all lead to another thing that if you research them, new breadcrumbs are presented. Conspiracy generation machine slash no real world could do this. It will work overtime. That's why it spends so much time and attention to detail here because certain, a certain group is very close to emerging from what we, we the caterpillar is it called the chrysalis chrysalis stage or pupa? What I'm just getting that from Doctor Lecter, whatever he said. It, it 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 works overtime on us with more distractions, more customized distractions for than for any other group in my opinion because we are close to winning because all is mind. The real spirit being doing all this research, thinking everything can be figured out, in some way is assisting the knot milk, assisting in generating more distraction on themselves. Again, the good news always lines up in our favor. It cannot impede your spiritual way directly. It must stand behind its trick. In spiritual matters, the trickster can't possibly be more powerful than the one it's trying to trick. Think about it. Here in this place, a real person must choose not to become the spiritual butterfly. It's all on one side. A personal win in this regard, when achieved, to me, is the true meaning of alchemy and of the Holy Grail. You know that your efforts are bearing fruit when you see yourself changing into a being that your 25-year-old self would not recognize. Doing the work is when real people drop baggage and gather small wins in fostering a better spiritual whole. I think here, part two of the work, it's inch by inch. It's not this grand moment where you emerge uh, from a forest or come down from a mountain or, oh, my life changed in a moment in this grandiose revelation, knowing exactly what you're supposed to do. I don't think it works like that here. This place is too fiddle and bends low. For me, it's inch by inch. It's picking up a piece of trash once a day. It's putting a spider out once a day, doing little things, caring for my cats in a way I wouldn't have cared about animals or anything 10, 15 years ago. I didn't give a shit about those types of th- Just noticing the difference in you, tiny steps. That's my interpretation of part two of the work. That might not be yours. What does the knot milk do in its defense? It has people worry about the hugest, grandiose concepts. It's, it's, it, it has you focused over here like you need to drop this gigantic, massive thing called karma. It's getting you completely on the other end of the sliding scale than just, you know, chop wood, carry water, do the work, gradually improve yourself, become the person your 25-year-old self wouldn't recognize. No, no, that's these little things. Oh, what a waste of time. You need to do these grandiose things. You need to drop karma and these huge, I mean, come on. I mean, that's part of the trick. I mean, we talked about karma, so I'll be very brief here in this section. But like uh, getting people to believe that karma is something outside themselves or bigger than the person. Karma presented as something real that needs to be overcome. Like it's not, it's a separate entity in and of itself and it's ridiculous. If it is believed to be a separate entity and something that needs to be overcome, then the person uh, just instead has given life to it. Like all things, it does not exist without the heart-centered reality bubble bringing substance and form to it first by reaching out and embracing it and believing it needs to be overcome. To me, the final step to winning is as simple as having the realization that this is not the place that I want to be and that I have done enough. I'll make sure this life serves its intended purpose, of course. Then I'll make sure all parts of me know that when this is done, the life of Matt McKinley in particular, then we are done with it. The most important thing here, in my opinion, is the understanding that everything important is up to us. That's why it plays a trick. A believer in karma is subservient to the concept itself. Simply see this reality exactly the way you want it to be, so it serves you. I believe the minions like Melvin P. and the other role players here serve me. That is what I believe, so it serves me. It's that simple, because I said so. I believe what Brad Pitt said in the movie Troy. 
as hard as this life is, harder for some than others, while we are here, the gods envy us, he said in many ways. He said, not knowing when a moment will be your last makes life more beautiful. There are emotions here likely no other place in the universe can offer. Embrace both the good and the bad as they come for this very reason. Of course, there are no gods, in my opinion, like what Brad Pitt put forth, the gods envy us in some etheric room somewhere, envying us as they look down on us through Professor Marvel's crystal ball. Those envying us, as was thrown out in the movie Troy, um, are those, in my opinion, like us, who are not having this experience, or were not, uh, did not have the balls to have this experience, as someone like Tony would put it. I don't know if he said balls, but he said he said it's rare to have the catones to jump into this experience as you and I have. Josh would disagree, and I understand why. He said he, some people would say nobody would sign up for this if they had the choice. I disagree. That doesn't change the core principles behind what I'm saying. You can see wonder in even the most menial of things here if you choose to or as some do, believe we must surely be trapped here, for no one would sign up for such trauma. That's a loser's attitude. I remind you, to lose here is entirely up to you. But Matt, in your opinion, don't we need to know exactly what a win or a finish line looks like? Like in school, we know what grade gets you an A, right? And my school was 92 or above, got it. No, no, not at all. Simply, there no defined finish line at all. A realization to your spiritual whole that I've, or we've done enough, feeling we've done enough, no defined metrics, we've done enough. As I alluded to earlier, I believe the ratio of a dream to the waking world will be the same relationship, for the most part, as the waking world to death, or what's in the next phase. To me, it's likely that simple. Death will be as easy as waking up in the morning from a dream. A dream may exist for this very purpose, to remind us while we're here of the relationship between this life and what comes next. We don't need to know what will happen at death exactly any more than your dream character needs to understand that its real self is sleeping in a bed. Does your dream character need to know that its real self is sleeping in a bed? We don't need to know much that except that there's another part of us through the portal of death. That's fine. I don't need a religious infrastructure for those sorts of answers. It's likely we get what we expect to get at death, thereby exposing the main reason our power is being hidden from us in the first place by something I call not milk. If you fear a hell or you're planning for a recycling trap and that's all you focus on is a recycling trap at the moment of death, then you may have, uh uh-oh, just manifested that outcome on yourself because you believe that. See how it works? You feel, I'm not just telling you anything. Your inner knowing is going, yeah, that's right. I guarantee your inner knowing is going, yeah, that's right. As above, so below. Where do these things come from? What do they truly mean? You and I have clearly overcome the trick here. So assuming there even is any of these tricks at death and all this, I mean, I'm not concerning myself with it. But if I've overcome the trick here, why would I think even if it exists that I would fall for the trick there? I mean, as above, so below. I've beat it here. Whatever might come, I'm prepared. I'm not, so I'm not worried about it. I mean, it, that, it's that simple. The other side of the equation is even more good news for us. If it has me so securely at death and its tricks are so foolproof at death to recycle me back and it's going to hover over me at the moment of death uh, with karma and other traps and things it's going to put into my belief system, if it has me so securely at the portal of death, then a small, small problem. Why is it working so hard now to influence me? And if it's working so hard to influence me, then see, it must be, oh, I see, 22 mile to Davenport, my influence then matters, or is the key element in the equation. If it's working so hard every minute of every day to shape or warp my belief set, which it certainly does, we can see that, then in this reality, I'm in control of winning or losing. That's why it's working so hard. That's what it clearly says. As I've said many times, if one day it decides to leave us alone, uh, that would concern me. After all we've been through, though, I see the word worry has to be removed from our worry about yourself slogan. There's no need to worry about anything. But I'll leave it in. We'll stick with it because it's fun. It's a way of expressing a concept that I borrowed from a little girl, and that's the way she said it, and it's funny. But taking away the word worry leaves us just with yourself, yourself, and all that you are no longer hidden 
from yourself, the not nilks trick, at least on a few of us, has failed. Everything we've learned is the greatest news of all time. This certain realization and recollection and understanding we've gained is like a thousand times better than winning the lottery. It's even greater than a Taylor Swift album. But regarding the people around us, there's no envying. <laughs> there's no envying what we've done. There's no understanding what we're doing. There's, oh, Matt, you're listening to that guy. Oh, you. We've wasted our time, according to the people around us. That's okay. I like the young soul, old soul concept. You can try to just tell people the way things are, and it goes right through them. They don't recollect or understand one word of it because they're not ready to. It's not their time, and that's just fine. Again, there is no clearly defined moment of winning as we move through this process of various stages. There are many different types of people listening to me now at all different levels. Every day left for you, though, is out there to learn and grow from. If you take the road less traveled, you will someday know that you have done enough. You'll feel it. Much of the old guard is already there. There is no exact finish line to cross and to be observed. You will simply know that you've done enough. So keep benefiting from every experience, even the bad, until your last day. At some point, an aspect of you will say, get us out of here. We're out. We've done enough. You know what? The not milk won't be happy to see us go. You think, oh, those troublemakers are out of here. It's going to be very happy. No, no. It needs us far more than we ever needed it. One last note. I'm sure, obviously, there are parts here that you disagreed with. However, if even half of this is in the ballpark, even half is accurate, then this is the best news of all time. So take the knowledge that resonated with you and head out into life every day, knowing that you are, in fact, the most important thing in this universe and the center of everything, not what Neil of the Grass Fed says, some little thing on the outskirts of the Sagittarius arm, as usual. What comes from them is the rule of opposites. It's the greatest news of all time. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. Um, this is not the end of the channel. I'll be back on Thursday. We'll do Not Milk Travel Tours. We'll continue to laugh at it. Does anybody think it's done presenting its trick? Oh, it, it's the magenta. It wants to move us into the digital world. Its trick is not going to end. I mean, so uh, there was a lot to talk about in terms of the basis of how reality works. I don't think this is going to change much. But again, if certain things just did not sit right with you, this has to hold up to all scrutiny, of course, to all objections. So go ahead. Hit me with the objections. We can do a whole video once a week. Your email, Matt, this is wrong, and here's why. Let's do that back and forth. This has to hold up, or it's of no value. P certain parts were total horse shit, then rip it, and we'll talk about it in future videos. No, I'm not going off to sell pencils. I'll be back on Thursday. Thanks, guys.